<laughs> right, we're back. Sorry. I hope you uh, can join us again. Sorry about that. We've had technical issues tonight. I don't know whether it's the storm. Maybe you guys are having the same problems. Um, yeah. <laughs> Hello. Yes, rewind and all the rest of it. Sorry, folks. Um, OK, so we've done everything. We have restarted our hub. We have closed every app. Everyone has been barred from using the internet. It can only be the weather. If it cuts out, nothing much more we can do about that, I'm afraid. It's been fine all day. Of course it has. Um, so yes, uh, welcome back to the kitchen. Thank you so much for being with me again. Um, so I'm going to start as if I haven't even been here tonight. So we're going to start again. So PayPal link is paypal.me forward slash Jepsongs. Please like and share this post as much as possible. We love to see where it's all going and and all the rest of it and it helps the reach so thank you for that uh, if it's your first time watching please press the like button if you've been here before please please press the love let me see the love hearts come on let's have a cavalcade of love hearts from you all let's see them um, if you're watching live please comment with the number one that helps us a lot again and if you're watching on repeat please press the number two so yes um, so yeah 30 years since the release of the young gods record can you believe that ridiculous I know um, March the 31st, I believe, or March the 30th, I think one of the two, um, of 1991. Just seems like a flash in the pan to me. Road Gods Tour, um, Hammersmith the first time, played all over the country, obviously at the City Hall level, and then we sort of culminated with the ZZ Top and Brian Adams Tour all across Europe where we played Milton Keynes Bowl. Everyone remember that one? I don't know if you guys were there. Um, an extraordinary time for us as people, extraordinary time for the band. Um, didn't really know what was going to hit us, but it was incredible. And we had loads and loads and loads of breakthroughs, you know, at radio and etc. So, and, and most of it down at you guys for being there and buying the stuff and coming to the gigs and all the rest of it. So I thought tonight, because we've got that situation where we're 30 years on, um, I'd celebrate a little bit. So I'm going to play a couple of songs that haven't ever been played before. Might be a bit of a risk. Absolutely is a risk. So we'll see how we get on with those. Um, but tonight, I just wanted to say I'm dedicating tonight's show to my dear departed mother-in-law. There she is, Judy, up there. Um, and there's a photograph of her here. Um, obviously, last week we couldn't do the show because we had, uh, um, sadly, she passed away. But tonight I'm dedicating the whole show to, to my mother-in-law. And she was a huge Little Angels fan, came to loads of gigs, and her favourite song was Boneyard which she constantly talked about, as well as lots of other songs. So I know she's here with us in spirit. So I'm going to start with that track, um, and, and start as we mean to go on. So, uh, yeah, um, uh, how many, what's the count looking like? How are we doing? 286. All right! 286, we bust the 250. So let's, uh, let's have a go, here we go.
always with me, always with me. singing and we completely stopped and it just carried on for I don't know it felt like forever but um you know minutes and minutes and it was incredible great 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 feeling for us all so anyway um thank you for being here again um I'm going to start get straight into all this with some shout outs and um 
Oh, fantastic. Well, thank you. Brilliant. Okay, so um, got some shout outs tonight. So first off, my mate Dave Lloyd. And I'm giving Dave a shout out because he, he specifically messaged me today and uh, banged on a bit about how he'd been working really hard and done something with the car and all that, you know. But anyway, I'm just going to do it. I'm just, uh, just saying it to Dave. Uh, good lad. That's all I, all I can really say there. Uh, happy birthday to Barry Turner for last Saturday. Brilliant, Bazza. You mentioned before that there are certain... Um, there are certain you wouldn't certain songs you wouldn't have put on. I think you're supposed to say that wouldn't have put on. Which ones would you have put on? And in place of which ones? Well, on this record, tough that. Um, I think the, some of the B. I mean, we did loads of B sides for for this record. Uh, you know, which I thought some were really really great. Um, I don't know. I think maybe we probably would have left off a couple of the songs towards the end of the album. I think that's the only thing I perhaps would have done differently. You maybe not had quite so many songs on it. Um, but, you know, hey, that's hindsight, isn't it? Uh, belated birthday greetings for Di White. Um, yes, well done there. And just back from the dentist, now on antibiotics. <laughs> Looking forward to... I'm sorry about that. I'm not laughing really, Di, honestly. Juvenile offender would be amazing. Mm, we'll see. Um, Sally Dove, can I have a shout out for no reason in particular other than that it will make my day? Well, that seems to be the order of tonight. So absolutely, we're celebrating. So no problem. Sally, no problem. Um, can I have a shout out? Uh, we've got another Alice. Alice and Bruce here. Could you wish all the mums a happy Mother's Day for Sunday and send a wee hug to those of us whose mums are no longer here? Well, we've got that going on here as well. So absolutely. Um, yeah, happy Mother's Day coming up. So brilliant. And my mate Lee Bourne, as well as being my 48th birthday today, can I get a massive shout out for the one and only Dave Kemp? Of course! Lee and Dave share a birthday, so I hope Dave's watching. So yes, Mr Kemp, the legend that is. Um, it's his birthday today and he's 25. Um, so I'd, I'd love it if you could dedicate a song to both of us. Well, um, we'll just have to wait and see. That's a little bit of an ask, to be honest. But uh, we'll see what happens. Um, okay, so... Um, what have we got? I've got some stuff to tell you. Uh, I mean, again, I'm just looking at this sheet that Rob sent me. Little Angel's album, 30 years. When you actually see it written down on a bit of paper, that's pretty extraordinary. Um, anyway, please like and share this post as much as possible. You can see uh, this afterwards, obviously. So press number one if you're watching live, number two if you're not. And um, the PayPal link is paypal.me forward slash jepsongs. Okay, uh, anything coming over the uh, into Tinto Ep Ether there, ladies? We've got a chat called Simon from watching in Toronto. Mm. That's the furthest I've seen. Wow. <clears throat> Thank you, Simon. That's brilliant. And can you wish Lynn Jefferson Mackney a happy birthday? Oh, Lynn. Happy birthday. Wonderful. Wonderful. <clears throat> okay, so I will do... I'll, all right, I'll dedicate this song. I'll dedicate this song to, um, to Lee and to, uh, to Dave. Um, this one, I, don't, I haven't played this very often. I don't know if I've even played it on these busking sessions at all, but we played this a lot live and we used to really like this one. So, uh, see so if you remember it.
hang on. Close Park in yeah. Newport. Craig, elaborate, please. You don't even know. What well, I mean, like, I mean, I don't think I was there. <laughs> <laughs> Can't even remember that. That's random. 2013. That would be yeah, 2012. Uh, it, well, oh. Yeah, no, I don't. I think. Oh, Craig, you might be. Oh, I don't know. Yes, maybe. 2012. Oh, Craig, yeah. you might be wrong. Well, we 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 did, we did some gigs the following year, didn't we? No, it was 2013. Isle of Wight, wasn't it? Yeah, Isle of Wight. But we did some warm ups. But we did a. We didn't. I don't think we played Newport. Oh, come on, Craig. Oh. The statistician. Anyway, um, yeah, brilliant. Um, just wanted to explain a little bit what's going on with the old backdrop here today. This here, I don't know if anyone can see this, but this, this, uh, I'll, I'll, I'm not going to pick it up because I've got it stuck down onto the, onto the, uh, the tabletop here. But this is uh, the original um, Spitfire kick drum uh, painting that we had done for Michael Lee that he had attached to his kick drum that we were going to go on tour with when we were going to call the album Spitfire. Um, a, a very kind chap, I forget the guy's name, I'm really, really sorry, I'm, I think if you're watching I apologise. Um, a very kind chap contacted me a couple of weeks ago and said, I've got this, would you like it? So it is original, it's hand painted, it was on Michael Lee's drum kit and then we had to change the album to Young Gods, the title album title to Young Gods. But this exists, and I'm going to put this in for auction. You know, I keep talking about this auction we're going to do. We're going to try and get it done by the, um, hopefully by the end of the month or the beginning of April. This is going to go up for auction uh, for homelessness, um, and it's a really prized, a proper piece of absolute rock trivia, that is. Never, never toured well. I can remember it being on his kick drum when we were rehearsing, so that's amazing. Um, got, the, got the guys here, got a picture of us there with uh, Brian Adams. That was on actually on the... Um, that one there, that was actually on the uh, tour with ZZ Top, that was. Uh, I think that was in Germany somewhere, I seem to remember. I've obviously got, I've got the Bon Jovi lads there, could not have them, could we? And there is the wonderful Michael Lee and the guys, that's when we were at Rockfield Studios starting to work on, actually, the Don't Pray For Me album, so not quite, it was a little bit earlier, but uh, magnificent, magnificent. So yeah, all good. Um, so that's that. I've got, like I say, my mother-in-law, Judy Gore. Uh, accompanying this tonight, um, as a picture, I've got a picture here of the guys when we were back in 2012 when we did the Reformation tour. So yes, yeah, all very angel you find tonight. On the albums there, look, got the Young Gods record. Got, a, got this. This is pretty cool. I don't know if you guys have ever seen this, but we got presented this by our promoters when we um, headlined. I don't know if it's a bit, it was a little bit sort of shiny there, but when we headlined Hammersmith for the first time, we got presented with these. So some lovely mementos. Some great memories. Um, so it's, it's a delight to do this for you tonight. Thank you so much for being here. Um, so yeah, maybe any more, anything coming over the ether there? Sea Close Newport is the venue for the Isle of Wight Festival. Ah, okay, so you didn't fox us. Okay, but, but we've got to admit that we're utterly rubbish then. That's what it comes down to. <laughs> so, Craig, I bow in your general direction. I send whelks your way. Um, so yeah. I've got something. Go on then. Ryan Blacksell says this a three-year-old just Around the shoulder, pointed at you, and said, "What's her name?" He's never seen a man with long hair before. Okay, I'm taking that as a compliment. I'm, I'm, I'm having that. I'm taking that. That's a compliment. That is. Okay. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, so what I've got to tell you, I've, I've got some stuff here. Um, oh yes, yeah, so I want to thank you all. The viewfinder bundles, all the viewfinder CDs and bundles are now being posted. It should be with you. I think I've seen them popping up on my Facebook feed. So. Um, that's great. I'm, I hope you're enjoying that. It was great fun putting it together. Uh, they are coming, so I mean, obviously we're still under the sort of duress of the, of the postal system, but we will see. Um, Wayward Sons the album. I've literally got the master for the album back through today for the master and engineer, so that's now in play. Uh, everything's done. It's done and dusted. Thanks the lords. Thought the lords of music that that is finished with. Um, uh, but yes, I'm very proud of it, and as the rest of the guys are. And Toby TV's uh, episodes one to three are now available to watch on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. My YouTube is at Toby Jetson Official. If you haven't joined it, please join it and follow me if you want to check that out. Number four will be coming next week. We didn't, we didn't want to do this one this week because we want to try and keep it current and all the rest of it. So there we go. Um, yeah, so what we're going to do next. Um, done my kind of life. I enjoyed that. 
Let me have a little look at that next time. Okay, yeah, so, yeah, this one, I've played this, I've played this a couple of times. I find this quite tough to play, but we'll see how we get on. Um, this became a sort of centerpiece. I mean, I'd love to you to send your memories of the touring period of, of Young Gods, the Road Gods tour. If you've got any of those, send them through. Let us know where, where you, what gig you went to. I can remember almost every show, almost precisely. It's really strange. I think it was such a sort of such an impression on me, and an impression on the whole band, and how incredible it was. What a great feeling, um, you know, that we managed to achieve this thing. You know, a um, bunch of lads from Scarborough. You know, seriously, it was the breakthrough for us. But this became a bit of a sort of centerpiece for the touring at that point, um, and a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant guitar solo from Bruce on the album. I think it's one of the finest guitar breaks in rock. I mean, I, I really mean that. I'm very, very, very proud of the of, of the of the song, but I'm even more proud of Bruce for the uh, incredible guitar playing that he played across the board, across the whole of this record. Absolutely staggering guitar playing. Really came into his own on it, I think. You know. But anyway, here we go. Starts to light a cigarette, only 14 years no more. He's been running hard.
goodness me, difficult, difficult that one. I was saying earlier on that it was kind of it's kind of weird when you make records, and this album was a kind of very um, extraordinarily complicated record. And I don't think we set out to kind of make that kind of record initially. We sort of evolved into it. The song started to appear and it started to sort of become a kind of concept record. And of course we ended up calling it Spitfire and it was an examination of life. Um, and actually it's a totally pro-life record really. I mean, Boneyard isn't about death, it's actually about life. It's about living your life while you have it. That was the whole principle behind it. And the fact that we were young people and our generation was surging forward and we were looking for the positivity in, in life and trying to do good things, you know, that's what we were all about. And, and when we kind of got banned by the BBC and Woolworths and all these crazy people said that we couldn't put our record out because we called it Spitfire and they thought it was pro-war, we were absolutely mortified. We really were. Um, because it just wasn't about that stuff. So it's kind of crazy how, the, you know, the, the, in, in translation things get lost, isn't it? But the record was complicated, difficult... And um, there were songs, I mean, this next song I'm going to play, I've never played this live. This is never, I think, I don't even think Little, Angel, Little Angel's played it live. We've not done it maybe once or something. So this could be a really difficult, <laughs> don't know, difficult birth. But, um, and, and it's, it's because we found that some of the songs were really difficult to transfer into a live environment, you know, because they were incredibly complicated in terms of the, the sonics and how we put them together. So they became album tracks, you know. Um, <laughs> We'll see how we go. I had a woman, and she had me. I painted a lady, no rifle free. She showed me some things you wouldn't believe. But I would leave her, I could not see. She had another.
bad at all. Yeah, I, I, again, a sort of song... I can remember writing that song with Bruce at his mum and dad's house in Scarborough, in, when he lived in Scorby. And we were around sort of working on ideas. And it lasted for... That was well before we even were recording any of the albums. So it's funny how some sort of ideas stay and they evolve and all the rest of it. But, um, yeah, that's good to play that. Okay, so... Um, what else have I got to say? I've got some more shout outs, I've got a few more of those, and I've got some questions going on as well, which is quite cool. So, a few more here. So, we've got Andy Lynham. What jobs did you do before becoming a full time musician? <laughs> At what point did you think you could make a living out of a music career? Who's made a living out of a music career? I, I have, uh, but barely. I mean, it's one of those things. Um, you know, the, I think out of if you, if you were to take all of the working musicians in the world, pretty much, it's only the top 1%. 2% maybe, that genuinely make it huge and sell millions of records and have huge incomes and all the rest of it. The rest of us, there's a big strata in the middle where you can survive, um, you know, if you had a little bit of a legacy like I've got, <clears throat> by, you know, doing things like this, you know, and um, building a career based on solo work and all the rest of it, but you use the nostalgia and, and all, you know, it's all about the kind of the, the prolonged longevity of things. But not most of my friends that are professional musicians um, are, are normal people that are, live in normal houses that have all have mortgages, have children, you know, cars to run, etc. So it's kind of you have to sort of make a decision to take the plunge, and it's tough because it's a huge roller coaster. Sometimes it's feast, sometimes it's famine, mostly famine, actually, most of the time. Um, but I wouldn't change it for the world. I've met some amazing people, did some done some incredible things. Um, and it's, I met all you guys, and it's, we're still here. That's what it's all about, really, isn't it? Um, Andy Richardson, would you like, a uh, we would like a shout out to our daughter Georgia, who starts high school part time here in Scotland next week, and is very uh, apprehensive about going back. You've got this, you, you, you've got this beautiful, love mum and dad. Oh, that's great. You'll be fine, Georgia. It's okay. Just think about the good things. School's not a bad place, really. It feels like it, but it's actually fine. I think you'll meet a lot of great friends. And it'll fly by, yeah, it will, it'll fly by. And you'll have fun and you'll you'll challenge yourself and etc. I think I wish I was going to school now when, rather than the flipping disaster I had when I was a kid. Because I think schools were so much worse back in the day, you know, 40 years ago. Absolutely terrible, you know. Um, and the, the, the teachers tried really hard, but it was just a different environment, different time. I think schools are a lot more progressive, a lot more stuff going on. So I think you'll be fine. Don't you worry about it. Um, Julie Warden, can you wish my other half, Mark, a happy birthday for Saturday? There you go, Mark, happy birthday. Paul Garnet, if you'd released a fifth single from Young Gods, what would it have been? Oh, that's a really good question. Uh, I think Love is a Gun, actually. I think Love is a Gun is a real hidden classic on that record. Um, it's just one of those songs that somehow got missed. And it was written, co-write co between me and um, Russ Ballard, and the great Russ Ballard, you know, I've heard me talk about him before. And I just thought that was a great, a great song. Um, I think, sadly, you know, some of the other songs are a bit long. I think Juvenile Offender could have been a great single, but we'd have to have edited it down. It would have taken the, would have gutted it, really, in lots of ways. Um, but yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, who knows? Who knows what that would have, what, what would have happened then? Anything coming over there, ladies? Anything exciting and interesting? Uh, we've got Sarah watching in Adelaide. Wow! Having a breakfast. Hi Sarah, thanks for joining us. I bet it's wonderful down there, isn't it? Can you say hello to Mo Smith? Hi Mo Smith. And happy birthday to Ness Runwald. Oh, hi Ness. Yeah, brilliant. Happy birthday and all that. Um, fantastic. Yeah, this is great, great. So yes, please let us know where you are in the world. Uh, please like and share this post. Please, please, please. Um, yes, yeah, so like I say, last week, because of our family bereavement, not much, you know, we didn't obviously have anything going on. Um, I didn't even do my Patreon, but we got back to the Patreon this week, which was great fun. Um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's fantastic the way that this community's building between you guys and everything in Toby and the whole truth. I can't thank you enough for it. Um, last week we discussed uh, myths and legends of rock and roll, which was great fun. This coming week on Patreon, I'm starting a whole series of playing brand new songs that I've written for my forthcoming solo record, which I'm going to start recording at some point relatively soon. So um, that might be a reason why you might be interested in joining Patreon. Um, but that's what I'm going to start doing, because I want it to be about progression. I think we spent the, rest, the first part of the whole Patreon, uh, Patreon setup as a kind of nostalgia trip and looking back on things and sort of like reflecting on it. But now I want to make it about progression. 
and start doing new things because I think that's the whole point of Patreon that you're a patron of the arts and you're supporting someone like me so thanks to everyone that has and anyone that's interested please go and take a look there's all the videos are up there um, there's lots of videos on, on YouTube and, and, and all so that you can check out the sort of things that we do okay um, okay so I'm gonna try this one this one is the one that's never been I don't think I think we played this once I think I was saying to Ket earlier on I think we played this we may have played it a few times, I, I, only time I remember is we played it at the Paradiso, opening for Saxon, that's in Amsterdam, um, and I think then we stopped playing it. <laughs> it just didn't kind of, kind of work. It is a bit of an odd one, but I'm going to try it, see what you think, okay? Um, see if you, if you can sort of recognise it. <laughs> And sing. Oh, that, that's, that's probably the reason why we never did it, really, to be honest. We but, loved uh, it, and Ian Evans said it's his favourite song of all time. No! Who's that? Ian Evans. I thought he said me dad. Um, <laughs> 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 well, Ian, that's brilliant. That's great, though, isn't it? And since you played that, you played every single song of Young Gods now. All right, yes. Bring it. You know it. Now, unbelievable, really. Um, yeah, I don't know, it's funny when you write something like that. I mean, I can remember writing, I wrote that on a piano. Um, I had a crappy keyboard at home and I was messing around with it. And it was a keyboard that Jim, I think, was one of Jim's he just didn't use. And I was messing about with it. And I kind of just came up with that. Da -da 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 and it was really, I was, I wanted it to be rocky. <laughs> I was trying to rewrite the rocky theme, I think. But failing miserably. So... <laughs> There you go. Well, yeah. the well, no, the kind of, the sort of essence of it, you know what I mean? It costs you some sound. Anyway, I'll sort of, <laughs> like it, is it? Yeah. Oh, I forget it. Okay, move on. Yeah. 
Um, right, yeah, uh, a PayPal link, paypal.me forward slash gypsongs. Please like and share these posts, really, really, really helps. Uh, lots of free downloads available. Obviously got the wonderful um, Madeline Jepson over here. Sat in the wings looking perfumed and, um, and resplendent in, um, in totally in a, a, a fake fur one piece, actually, but not we can can't see. It's all good though, it's all, it all fits, it does, it fits. Um, but we've got the downloads of those tracks, uh, Forgiveness, and what was the other one we did? Oh, um, When Will We Learn, I think, we've got those. And we've got other things, and hopefully there'll be a track from this, if not, <laughs> not, not too bad. So yeah, um, yeah, good. Uh, so what are we moving on to here? Oh yeah, um, anything, just before I move on to the next bit, anything else happening um, there going on? Doctor. No, it, I keep getting asked this. Um, there is, I mean, I think there is a, probably a, a, a chance that we could we could organise something through the through the Little Angel system. We own all the designs and we own the rights to put those T-shirts out. The problem is, is that it's expensive unless you have bulk. You know, it's like when I do my stuff with you guys. You know, it becomes a kind of expensive exercise if there isn't a lot of people who want them, sort of thing. Um, so it comes down to demand. I mean, I think it could be, it's worth, I think it is definitely worth looking to. If, if enough people sh shown an interest in it, then I'm, I'm sure we could do something with it. I mean, I will let you into a secret that this year, but we couldn't do it now, we were talking about coming back and doing three or four shows of Little Angels and celebrating this record <laughs> because it's the 30 year, um, you know, anniversary. That was, there was some conversation about that. Um, not that we confirmed we were going to do it, so obviously that hasn't happened because we can't for all the obvious other reasons. But I wouldn't discount the idea of us getting back and doing some shows. Um, but at the right time, uh, maybe in a couple of years' time when the 30-year anniversary of Jam happens or something, you know. So we're always we're always aware of this as, as a band. You know, we know how important it is to you guys and we know how much it meant to people. So it actually makes it even more important that we get it right. You know, we don't just want to go out there and do it for, for just random reasons. There's got to be sort of a, a reason to hang our hat on it. Um, but I spoke to Bruce today, funnily enough, and we were nattering about things, and yeah, we're very much in contact. And I really hope we can do something. I don't quite know what it will be, but we'll we'll see. We'll see how we get on with that. So um, yeah, okay. Um, so this one's kind of inevitable. I mean, um, but this became this was kind of really, I suppose, the breakthrough song. Boneyard did really, really well for us, um, and obviously Young Gods did great for us. But this was the breakthrough, uh, and it, it set us on a course to chart success that we couldn't ante have anticipated. Um, and you know, I can remember, funnily enough, going to, going to play pool with your, um, your uncle Andrew, Ket's uncle. Um, and I, I don't know why we were doing it, but it was a summer's day and we went to play pool and this track came on the bar radio whilst we were there playing pool. It was extraordinary. And I hadn't kind of really heard that before. Um, so uh, yeah. i 
So um, this one was asked a bit, I mean this is this is a really tough tune to sing because it was played on the piano, it was meant to be something kind of very lilting, I find this quite tough but we'll see how we see if we like this. Shout outs. Um, oh goodness me, time is getting on. I hope we're all right. I hope everyone's okay. Ladies and 
Oh, we did start late. Sorry about that starting thing. But I can't, I can't abide it when things go wrong and it ruins it for everybody. So I took charge. Um, okay, so we've got some more shout outs here. Um, oh, brilliant. St uh, Steph Smith, please, Toby, can you sing Happy Birthday to my dear friend Lee Bourne? Um, it would make his day. Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday to you, Lee. Yeah, happy birthday to you. I think you've had quite a lot tonight, Lee, actually. All right, we're having words. Um, right, Ian Roy. Uh, Toad, please could you shout out for Lisa, my long-suffering missus. It's her birthday on Monday. Happy birthday, Lisa, of course. Lisa and Ian, brilliant, fantastic people. Joe Woodfield, brilliant. Can't wait for Young Gods and Working, uh, for young, young Gods and Working, the Working Class. That's where I've played that one. Been saving up for uh, G&T all week for this. Uh, she's going to enjoy my evening with you. Brilliant. Well done, Joe. Fantastic. Well, indulge. Get in. Have a whole bottle. That's what I say. Why not? Um, <laughs> Uh, yes, why not? Okay. Ignore. Why not? Hey, Thursday's the, Thursday's the new Saturday. That's what I say. I don't, I, I don't even know. I don't even know what day of the week it is anymore. Do you? I wake up on Sundays and I haven't got a clue. You know, I have no idea. Uh, Diane, oh, Diane Pearl Mutter. Me and Tanya managed to get into the Circa Bar for the album launch party. I have no clue how. That doesn't surprise me. Best album porn, uh, part of launch party ever. We have fond memories of that night. Thunder were there, I think, and the Almighty too. Yes, they were. I recall you had a handful of young gods dressed up as well. Yes, we had some lookalikes. It was great. And all these people wandering around, you know, like dressed up as Elvis and looked like John Lennon all the rest of it. I have to dig out my photos and share them. Oh, please do. Um, what, I, what I'd love to know, what are your favourite memories of that night? Um, goodness me. It's a long time. I remember it being... Because, you know, you have these sort of like ideas when you're a young band of what all these things will be like. You know, you've heard this kind of mystery, this sort of mythical thing of launch parties and, you know, and like, um, I don't know, all that kind of thing. You know, sort of, what was it, what's it like getting a gold disc, man? You know, what would that be like? And, and all that sort of stuff. And so when these things actually appear and are there in real life in front of you, it becomes something different. And I, I do remember feeling kind of overwhelmed. It's that sort of imposter syndrome thing where you think, well, I probably don't really deserve to be here. What am I doing here? It's not for me sort of thing. It's that sort of thing. Um, and of course, Polydor spent a lot of money on it and there was lots of people there. We invited everyone, all the journalists were there and everything. Well, I do remember they played the album, I think I'm right, very loud through a big PA and it sounded magnificent. And I remember sort of feeling very proud about that. Um, yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's probably my my best memories there. Anything coming through the old? Uh... A bit more trivia from Craig. Oh, brilliant! He Come on, Craig. Says... I'm not ever gonna I'm never gonna doubt you again, Craig. All right. <laughs> Let me just put that out right now. I feel I feel mortified. I feel chastened. I might go and whip myself later. <laughs> Carry on. Before the album, I apparently I need a microphone. Before the album was renamed Young Gods, feels like my world has come and done. Did not feature. The Angels Anthem, it was called the Spitfire theme. It was, that's exactly right. What, that song was called? No, the Spitfire theme at the end, with the, with the when we go up to the C chord, that, <laughs> that thing there, which we nicked off the Beatles, um, that was, a, it was, it was called the Spitfire, th Spitfire theme, because at the end of Natural Born Fighter, if you listen very carefully, we have like a load of Spitfires, Fighting. We took we took some um, audio from um, an old newsreel thing, and we have like a, I think it's like some sort of general or some speech made by some nutter, you know, like Hitler or someone shouting in the background because it was anti-war. We were sort of sh talking about this whole thing, trying to discuss this thing, and so it was supposed to be it turned into a concert record. I mean, I spent weeks in Studio Two after I'd done a lot of my vocals, and Bruce was doing guitars and. Well, we were flip-flopping between the recording. I'd go over to the Coach House Studios in um, Great Linford Manor, where, where we ended up uh, doing the final bits of recording. And I spent weeks and weeks and weeks with the second engineer going through newsreel and, and getting audio, BBC audio tapes and sort of doing all the footsteps for the beginning of Young Gods and all that stuff. And it turned into a concept record. And so we were working two studios at the time. So it was um, ex extraordinarily complex, it was what it was. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, so yeah, I mean, I've, I'm kind of coming to the close. I've got one, two, one more sort of tune to play. So just wanted to remind everyone, um, next week, I don't know what we're doing next week. We sort of changed it this week. We were going to do, I, might, I might do covers next week. We've got a couple more weeks left, but I am absolutely, or we're absolutely planning on doing the auction for homelessness. We've got loads of items now, some real rarities, Little Angels rarities, some rarities of my own solo stuff. 
um, all kinds of things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to catalogue them all and I'm going to start, um, we'll find a way of putting them out so everyone can have a view of a picture of them and um, we're going to have reserve because I want to reserve some prices on them because I want to make sure that we raise as much money as possible. We're just trying to figure out the details of it so it's all very above board um, so you guys can know exactly where your money's gone but this wonderful piece of um, trivia here, the bass drum pedal, uh, bass drum skin will be part of it. Uh, I've got my old stage jacket, um, blue PVC one that I wore on the Young Gods tour. I found, my dad found that, that's up, up as well. So there's lots of items and I want to try and raise as much money um, to help the homeless. So um, I'll get that organised. So yes, um, final thing to say, PayPal link is paypal.me forward slash Jeff Songs. Please like and share this post as much as possible and thank you for being here, I guess. Anything, last things to say? Can't even remember them. Um, was schizophrenia blues one of them? Tell me that, John. Was schizophrenia blues one of them? In fact, John, tell me, tell me two or three of them, of the, the best ones, and I'll tell you. I think those "Go as You Please." I think those tracks was it tracks like that, those sorts of things. Um, I, I, to be honest with you, we used to, what we used to do. Quite interesting. We used to do make the album, and we'd, we because I was writing lots and lots and lots of songs, and we were all working on lots of ideas. Anything that was left over from the demo periods, because we used to go into studios and fully demo the albums, you know, that was the old school way of doing it really, and then look at the songs and see which ones were working, and then we'd go back and master them. But we often used to use the demos that we had left over and tart them up and remix them and all the rest of it and go and re-overdub things. And so there were quite often songs that were just weren't weren't finished or that sort of thing. Um, Revival. Oh. Go as you please. Yeah, exactly, I right? Like it better. I really liked Revival. I always Revival was a song that we started playing way back. It was around, I would say, the Don't Pray For Me era. And again, one of those songs that stuck around and kind of evolved. Never really fully realised itself in the studio, I don't think. A lot more to that song than, than um, I wanted it to be really a sort of simple rock and roll song. I was very much into In Excess at the time, I remember. And I wanted it to be something like that. Um, yeah, I mean, Go As You Please, bit of a weird one. Not really that keen on that. I know it's a lot of other people's favourites, you know. I don't know, it's, um, it's an odd one. You kind of spit as right as you spit these things out. Especially when you're in a band and you put them on a, some recording device and you sort of leave them, you know. Um, some make it, some don't, you know. Um, but fortunately, they're on B-side. Um, just a final few um, hellos and sort of... Cause I, I want to get through everyone here, if we possibly can. Um, I was going to say them really quickly here. Uh, what we've got here, we've got... We've got uh, Okay, yeah, so Dean Pruitt, um, yeah, we, we talked about the Spitfire, he's a member asking about, remember the album called Spitfire, I think. Uh, there was a photo uh, on the back of the 12 inch single, was it actually any albums produced before the Puggers? No, there wasn't. It was, it was just at the point where we were about to go to press it all, we had to withdraw it all, so that, that didn't happen. Um, Mark Fitzgerald, how did you go about choosing the singles? Were there any disagreements with the band members or the company? Singles tend to choose themselves. It's one of those ones where you you record a body of work and then there are tracks that just kind of stand out. It's weird. The only time we ever kind of got into any disagreement really was on the Jam album. There was a bit of disagreement around Womankind being released, which ended up being our biggest hit, you know. Um, and some some conversations and some, some nervousness about re releasing Don't Confuse Sex With Love as a single, which I don't think it did come out as a single. Um, I, don't, I don't remember it coming out as a single. But, um, and, and, and I think actually if we'd have done that, we may well have had a bigger, a bigger hit than something like Soapbox, because I think the record company were trying to kind of get keep us to keep that lightweight feel, which I'd never agreed with really. But, um, but there you go, it's all part of the, the process. Don Moorcroft, Babylon's Burning was a great B-side. Yes, it was, you signed my record many years ago. When you were standing in Birmingham, you gave your chair up to my mate who was not well. Oh, well, I hope he's all right now. And I also met you again when I sat next to you at the Skid Row gig in Birmingham, NEC. Small world, absolutely. Um, well, thanks for still being here, pal. Leslie Bowen, um, many memories of this tour. I'd love to hear you're going to cry. We've just done that. And here, Josie, with a poor, yes, well, fat leg, as we call her. She used to have four thin legs. Now she's got one fat leg and three thin ones. I think it's Popeye. I think she's eating too much spinach and she's got the old, got the weights going on. Don't be bringing it in yet. You're crying out loud. Honestly, it's never ending. <laughs> Give me a kiss. No, no. <laughs> oh, she smells. Anyway, um, Jason King. I know the album's originally called Spitfire. We've got, yes, it was, yeah. I know you changed it to the Gulf War. 
why, my question is, why Spitfire for the album then? That's a great question, Jason. Well, we felt it was just, it was kind of one of those on, on, on a map of tears words, really, in a way, it isn't kind, it's a bit Spitfire, do you know what I mean? So we felt that it was like, it summed up our attitude towards rock and roll. We, we felt like when we went on stage, we were spitting fire, and it was that, it was that, kind, of a, that kind of metaphor, that sort of analogy, you know. Um, but of course then we, we were writing the album and it sort of seemed to make a lot more sense because we were making this album that was about life and kind of anti-war sort of thing. So it all seemed to sort of crazily make a lot of sense. I think, I mean the album was a huge success for us, but um, it may well have been even more successful if we'd have stuck with that title. Do you know what I mean? It's one of those kind of really annoying things actually. Um, okay, Greg Murray, um, do, do you remember supporting Cinder I certainly do. Remember you having food fight on stage at Liverpool? <laughs> well, it was because we used to, it used to be this tradition back in the day, I don't think bands do it so much anymore, that the headline band would play physical tricks or, you know, um, practical jokes on the support band and, and vice versa on the last night of the tour. And that was the last night of the tour. And it was the coolest one that ever happened that they came out and put a set, set a table on the stage with four chairs around it, or two, two or three chairs around it, and members of Cinderella came on the stage, sat around the table and pretended to eat, have a meal. And I remember I jumped up on the table and kicked the food around, and then they were chucking it at us. It was great, brilliant. They were fantastic people. Tom Kiefer, one of the coolest men on the planet. Absolutely brilliant. Um, okay, so Paul, uh, just a couple of people to shout out here. Darren, Darren, and uh, Darren and Samantha Nunn would love to hear natural born fighters. Just done it. Um, the live shows were the best on the road, God. So I agree. I think they were brilliant. Paul Lowe saw you at St. Uh, Bradford St George's Hall. I remember it very, very well. I think that was the one where I fell off the stage or fell over, made a rat tit of myself. Uh, Chris Tate, uh, let's just get this out of the way and say it's a brilliant album, a masterpiece at the time, and still stands the test of time. Well, thank you for that, Chris. Question is about the length of the songs. The debut album contained five songs over four minutes. Young Gods contained nine songs over four minutes, one far over five, one over six minutes. I didn't know that. Was this a conscious decision by the band or the record company, or did you just reflect the songwriting and maturity of the band at the time? Never made, never made a plan to keep them at any length. Um, it was just how it happened. I mean, I don't really think that any these days either. You know, I, I just sort of do what we what we do with the songs and hope, and hope for the best sort of thing. But um, interesting, I didn't, I've never, never counted those things, and never, never realised that. So what I've got to say here, um, there's a few things that Rob's asked me to say. Lyric sheets, we'll be doing more, another batch of lyric sheets pretty soon. Um, thanks for ordering them last time, everybody. I um, uh, really enjoy doing them. And I know there's a couple, I think I've got to do a couple of, um, one got lost in the post. Uh, so I think I've got to do that for a couple of people. So I, I like doing them, but, we'll, but uh, I'll let you know when that's happening. Facebook, uh, Facebook group is at Toby and the Whole Truth. Um, yeah, he's saying we'll continue to grow a fantastic community with Toby and the Whole Truth Facebook community. Yes, we are. Thanks so much for being here. Uh, and please visit the website. I always, I keep forgetting this, tobyjetsofficial.com is the hub of everything I do. There we are. I'll see Dad, you next week. Yeah? Dad, quickly, how do you feel about being the warm up act for the legend that is Josie? Unbelievable. <laughs> I pull that's from, Tra that's from Tracy Palmer. Well, Tracy, thank you so much for that. <laughs> yeah, it feels a bit like that, don't it? Fucking unbelievable. Honestly, I can't believe it. Josie T-shirts. Leslie, what? Leslie's out of She should be on the T-shirt. No. Well, yeah. well, she's on the T-shirt, isn't she? Oh, is she? <laughs> to be revealed. Bloody Nora, honestly. She can't even play an instrument. She's just got one big fat leg. That's it. That's her talent. Her talent is smelling bad, bad breath. Um, and that's it, being fat, with a fat leg, three thin legs, one fat one. A big, one big cyst on her leg, is she? Well, it's a big fat leg, I think she's secretly sort of she's going to the group pumping weight so she can smack me in the jaw for being rude about her. Anyway, thanks for being here folks, I know it's been a bit of a slightly longer one tonight, sorry about the whole false start, and we're just getting back into it, but it was great, I really enjoyed it. It would be remiss of me not to do this, this was the one that really defined the band, defined the album, and it's always played on Planet Rock and a lot of the rock shows, I, I, you know, it, sta it staggers me that people still love this song and it's absolutely brilliant. I, I, I'm so pleased that you all do and I've played it loads so forgive me for playing it but I've got to surely, haven't I? <laughs>
especially. Thanks a lot for being here. Have a great uh, rest of the week and the weekend, and I'll see you next week. We'll let you know what's going on. Great to be back. Oh, for crying out loud. <laughs> second, <laughs> second appearance. No, she's got to say goodbye. Why? Is that, why? She can't speak. I don't speak dog. Anyway, can we... <laughs> Take care, folks. Love you all. Thanks a lot. See you soon. She's just falling over. <laughs>